Ooh, super exciting. All new packaging, green tabs, I'm gonna peel these off. And I'm like the nut that keeps all this stuff, of course. Peel that off. Felt like the right fit for me, so we're just gonna go with it. All right, so we need to set up the new M2 Pro Mac Mini. Oh, here it is. So we're gonna be replacing the 2013 Mac Pro with this M2 Pro Mac Mini. For those of you who don't know what the specs are, I'll go over those real quick. This is the base M2 Pro CPU, GPU, neural engine configuration, but I upgraded the unified memory to 32 gigabytes and the SSD to one terabyte, as well as the ethernet port to the 10 gigabit ethernet port, which brought the total cost of this to, I think, $20.99, which pretty much puts it $100 more than the base M1 Max Mac Studio. And there isn't an SD card slot. There are two fewer USB-C slots. Uh, uh, some could argue that the uh, Mac Studio was the better purchase for this. Here's the objective. I need to swap out the 2013 Mac Pro, put this in, but I need to transfer a lot of the data from the Mac Pro over to this one because I don't feel like installing a bunch of apps and transferring over iCloud settings and passwords and all that. We'll just do it using Migration Assistant when I start the computer. So let's tear out the Mac Pro, get it hooked up to this monitor, get this hooked up to this monitor, and start the setup process. All right, let's get, let's get let's get this moved over here so we get a better angle. It's not easy making YouTube videos like this, God, especially on the good camera. I like to use the good camera, but. Uh, you know, what do you do? So we're just gonna shut this down. I'm not gonna do it on the other side because I'm being lazy. We'll just power it off by pressing and holding the power button and start unplugging stuff. It never fails. Anytime I embark on one of these installs, I always overlook something. And here I'm contemplating, I might have to get some adapters. Which if that's the case, that kind of sucks. Bye-bye, tidy cable management. It was nice having you. Y'all know how much I love cable management and it sure can make a removal of a Mac a little bit tricky from a situation. I've got a lot of cables to untangle here from behind the desk and under it in the cable holder. But of course, it's so much easier to remove cables than it is to route new cables through. So we got power hooked up. Let's get what else we can get hooked up, hooked up. We can get audio. I'm gonna need a keyboard and a mouse, and I'm gonna plug in some old stuff to do that, just so we can have that. And then let's get our ethernet hooked up, which went where, here it is. We're probably gonna get a new one of these so that it's a higher speed. Then we need to connect both computers with Thunderbolt. So I've got Thunderbolt 2, but this is Thunderbolt 4, so we need Apple's $50 adapter, of course. And so we're gonna get this all connected, and this into here. All right, so I think we're ready to fire up this computer. There we go, power. Now let's, let's listen for the startup chime for the new Mac Mini for the first time. I think that'll be fun, here we go. All right, this is my mouse from like 1997. I always use it in case I can't get Bluetooth connectivity with one of my Macs. Okay. Now, are we not registering a connection here? Am I not getting a signal? Oh, okay. I don't think they're talking to each other very well. Maybe DisplayPort from DisplayPort to HDMI doesn't work? No. No. It's just HDMI. It's gotta be. Let's try HDMI. Let's see if that works. That working? There we go. That's interesting. So display port on the Dell to HDMI and the Mac Mini isn't pulling a connection, but of course HDMI to HDMI does. Display port to HDMI on the Mac Pro works, but it doesn't on the Mac Mini. That's interesting. Here, here we go, all right. 
doing the setup process. So the real issue I'm gonna be facing next is how do I connect a second HDMI monitor to the new Mac mini? I do have this pluggable Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 quad display docking station. So I wonder if this might be able to help me with the Mac mini situation. Pluggable sent this to me. I sent, uh, sent him an email and I said, hey, that new uh, Thunderbolt dock seems pretty cool. We'll see if this ends up needing to go into the mix with the Mac mini. All righty, we're back. I mean, need to start up migration assistant. Oh, there they are. They're talking to each other. There's a little Mac Pro logo. All righty. So now it's going to scan the Mac Pro to look for all of the things that I could transfer to the new Mac Mini. I don't know how some of you feel about using Migration Assistant to transfer the information from one Mac to another. I use it pretty much for all of my computers when I'm setting up a new one because I'm really just not interested in installing all of the applications from scratch, putting all my iCloud passwords, all that kind of stuff in. This just takes care of it and it's so much easier and it's incredibly fast if you're able to connect the two computers using Thunderbolt. Now this is going to take a while, so I'm going to hop off and come back when all the data is transferred. The more and more I'm thinking about it, this pluggable dock is going to be a great solution for the Mac Mini's limited connectivity. Oh cool, it's got uh, an SD card slot and a micro SD card slot. That's helpful. So you all know the drill, we got to get everything up and running, open up all of our applications, do any updates, go to the App Store, do any updates that are needed there, get your display settings dialed in. So I just had to go through all of this and get everything set up the way that I like it so I could finally test whether or not Ecamm Live was gonna work and take the signal from the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro, which is being fed by the Canon C300 Mark II and a few other HDMI inputs and get me ready to finally live stream. I've got camera feed from Ecamm Live, so we are connected between the Blackmagic and the Mac Mini, so all that seems good. I need to just get some cable situations figured out, and I need to make sure I can get this monitor up and running, which runs off of HDMI. And sadly, I need to disconnect the Mac Pro, and it's gonna go sit over here on the desk until I can figure out a new use for it. It's kind of the end of an era for the Mac Pro. Bye-bye, Mac Pro. It was nice knowing you. Tear. Mm. All right, let's get it disconnected. And of course the key to cable management is getting all of your stuff connected first and making sure it's all working. And you know, maybe try not to make it a complete mess in those initial connection phases. But then afterwards, once everything is working and you've confirmed that it's working, then you can start using your Velcro straps and those other things to really get your cables nice and tidy. Y'all know I love my cable management. Okay, so the pluggable dock is definitely helping the entire situation. I'm able to connect this monitor up here, which is a second monitor for the Mac mini and in my teleprompter. Here's the thing though, <laughs> as far as the design goes, the connection to the Mac mini Thunderbolt 4 comes out of the front of the dock. So you have to loop it around in the back with the way that I have the dock set up. And then the two front connections are a USB-A 2.0 connection and a USB-A 3.0 connection. But then there's a USB-C connection on the back. For the way I have this set up, I want the USB 2.0 connection in the back. I don't care about USB 2.0. I care about USB-C because I might want to plug in a hard drive or some other USB-C based accessory. I want everything that's going to be connected permanently to go out the back. And I want everything that's going to connect temporarily to be the more modern connections and those to be in the front. So not a fan of just the layout of these ports on the pluggable dock. But overall, so far, it's working great. This video isn't sponsored by pluggable. So what I need to do now is I need to go into the back and start getting all the cables managed. So let's jump back there and get all the cables managed and tidy. I know I'm being a little bit tough here with this pluggable dock and how this Thunderbolt cable comes out the front. I think it's really intended primarily for laptop users who are going to have that Thunderbolt cable handy at their desk and bring it out to plug in their MacBook to the dock versus a Mac mini that's a more permanent solution. So I definitely think this is a solid option if you're a laptop user. If you're a Mac mini user, you may want to look at a dock that has the Thunderbolt 4 port with power coming out the back of the dock, not the front of it. It didn't take too long. It's not the, you know, like, it's not super, super tidy, but I think this will work. All right. Well, I think we're updated. I think we've got it.
Mac Mini is up and running. Everything in the live stream. I haven't done an actual live stream yet, so I would probably need to test that, but it looks like everything is working. Now, I just want to make sure for everybody who's new to the channel or is not has not been tracking my updates with all of my streaming stuff. This is not a completed upgrade. In order for me to do what I intend to do with the Mac Mini, I need to get a Black Magic for HDMI deck link PCIe card and then I need an external PCIe enclosure and I'm going to connect that to the Mac mini so I can run all of my camera inputs and my MacBook Pro input into the deck link so that eCam can see each of those video sources individually. If you want to learn more about eCam definitely check out the link down in the description. It's amazing streaming software. It is a monthly subscription, but I highly recommend checking it out. If you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next live stream with the new Mac Mini doing its thing. And if you like this video about how I set up my M2 Pro Mac Mini, then definitely check out this other video on my channel about how I set up my M1 Max Mac Studio and Apple Studio Display. You're not going to want to miss that. That's all I've got for now. Until the next one, I'll see y'all later. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.